Hi everyone, welcome back to Lecture 10H of Useful Genetics, where we're continuing our discussion of the causes of chromosome rearrangements. Um, instead of thinking about DNA polymerase errors, as we did in the previous lecture, we're going to consider processes that are kind of independent of DNA polymerase. We'll consider non-allelic homologous recombination, which is also promoted by the sequence repeats in the genome, and then two other processes, non-homologous end joining, which is basically a DNA repair process, and the active insertion of mobile genetic elements, these sequences which are themselves the cause of all of the repeated sequences in the genome. So one way that rearrangements can happen is by a process called non-allelic homologous recombination. This is um, homologous recombination in that the participating sequences are homologous. They're two different repeat sequences in different places in the genome. They're dispersed repeat sequences. But mechanistically, it's quite a lot like crossing over. It's triggered by DNA damage, a break, single strand or double strand breaks, and strand separation. But the strands then instead of going back to their original partners, find new partners in sequences that are homologous, very similar because they have shared common ancestry, but they're not allelic sequences. They're in different places, perhaps on different chromosomes. Here again is our picture of a um, segment of the chromosome showing all the repeats. And again, these are all places where non-allelic homologous recombination can happen. So recombination could happen between this sequence and this sequence, they're very close together, or it could happen between this sequence and another copy of the sequence somewhere else in the genome. So here's an example of the outcome of non-allelic homologous recombination. I've illustrated a chromosome, the same green chromosome we were looking at before, but now I've shown the presence of two copies of a repeated, dispersed repeated DNA sequence um, here and here. And a non allelic homologous recombination event between these two sequences, which are homologous, they're closely related, similar enough to recombine, but they're not allelic. This, the allelic relationship would be with this sequence here. This non-allelic homologous recombination then creates two recombinant chromosomes that are no longer the chromosomes they were. One of them has suffered a deletion. It's missing this chromosomal segment between the two repeats. And the other one has now got two copies of the segment between the repeats. Um, and you can follow along. If you follow along the chromosome, you'll see that when we cross over, there's the long chromosome, there's the short chromosome, the deleted chromosome. These recombination events can happen between um, repeats on the same chromosome, as I've shown here, but they can also happen between repeats on different chromosomes or between repeats that are in different orientation on the same chromosome. And these will have dramatically different consequences. Now, rearrangements can also happen by a process called non-homologous end joining, and it's a way that cells can repair double-stranded breaks. So when a chromosome breaks, both strands of the DNA double helix break, this creates an urgent problem for the cell. These broken ends can cause all kinds of problems for DNA metabolism, and the cell has been selected to be very efficient at putting ends back together. The problem is making sure that the ends get put back together are the correct ends, the ones that belong together. If there's only one break, it's not a problem. There's only two ends to join. But if there's more than one break, as can often happen if the cell is experiencing some sort of DNA damaging stress, then there or the cell has to decide which ends to put together. And if sometimes it's easy, if the ends are very similar, it can use short segments of very similar sequences as a guide. Otherwise, it just puts together ends more or less at random on the 
reasoning that it's better to get those ends joined up to something, even if maybe they're not joined up to the same partner they were before. So here's an example of a chromosome that's undergone two breaks. And it can be put together in several ways. The ends can be joined back in their usual orientation, or this segment could be joined the other way around. As far as the um, repair joining machinery is concerned, it can't tell one broken end for another. They've all got a five prime end and a three prime end, and the machinery will join another three prime, five prime end to it. That's how end joining happens. And this process doesn't just, every end has this, this structure. You flip that one over, it looks like this. So the machinery can't tell the ends apart structurally at all. So joining this orientation is just as likely as this orientation. Or it could join this end with this end, creating this shortened deletion chromosome, leaving this other piece with no partner to join to. So here's a question. Here are two chromosomes, each of which has undergone one break. How many different ways can these broken ends be put together? Three ways. Okay, yes, they can be put together, assuming all the ends are put together, they can be put back together in their original orientation, that one with that one, and that one with that one. They can be put back together in an incorrect but functional orientation, that one with that one, and that one with that one or they can be put back together in a really wrong orientation, which would connect this one with this one, and this one with this one. This chromosome would then have two centromeres, and this chromosome wouldn't have any centromere. Now, the final way that we're going to consider that chromosome changes can happen is by insertion of a copy of a sequence from elsewhere in the genome. And I'm going to illustrate this by insertion of a mobile genetic element. This is a slide from Module 2. This is a very common, very, very common event. Events like this are the reason that the genome contains so much repeated DNA, and then it is in consequence, also the reason that the chromosomes are so subject to becoming rearranged. So we've considered chromosome rearrangements happening by errors in homologous recombination, but this particular hom homologous recombination is really a kind of homolo homology-guided DNA repair. It's called into action in response to DNA damage. Um, we considered non-homologous in joining a, a less sophisticated, more desperate way of repairing broken DNA by simply joining all the ends together without reference to whether they belong together or not. And we considered insertions of mobile sequence elements. Coming up next, we're going to start thinking about the consequences of chromosome rearrangements. And we'll first think of them in the context of does this rearrangement generate a chromosome that can function as a chromosome? I hope to see you there.